Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. My name is Jack. Today we're going to be building and reviewing a Lego Star Wars set. This is the Moss Eisley Cantina. It's recommended for ages 8 to 14. It is set number 75205 and it has 367 pieces. Included are four minifigs, Greedo, Han Solo, the bartender, and a sand trooper. And in this set, it feels like the main feature is sort of the uh, who shot first play function in the back. All right, so this looks like a pretty quick build. Let's get it open and finished. All right, so here's the set completed. It took just over half an hour to finish, and I'd say in general, I'm pretty happy with the way the build went. But first, let's take a look at these minifigs. There are four of these guys in total, three of which are totally exclusive prints. And while Han Solo is a repeat, uh, so far he has not been released with this particular hairpiece combined with the prints that make up the body. So anyways, let's take a look at him first. I feel like they didn't bother to update this guy because, well, basically they got it right the last time. The details look good. I don't think they're really missing anything Thing that they needed last time. And the expressions also pretty much match the scene that he's placed in also for the set. Rito, on the other hand, is completely updated in terms of the detailing that makes up his body. You can see some folds in the pants, which is new, and also just sort of the uh, detailing that makes up the pockets and vest and everything on the uh, torso is technically different. The best part about the print, though, is definitely the updated sort of sparkles that you can see in his eyes. I think normally they were just kind of glassy eyes, but this brings out a bit more of the shininess and uh, it's a lot more noticeable than the last version of Greedo. Now we also get the first version of this character, I believe, in Lego. This is War. He's the bartender. I don't know how to pronounce his name. And the detailing for this guy is surprisingly recognizable considering he plays a pretty small role in the movie. I like that he's got a little bit of an outline to show that he's got a chubby belly and he looks a bit unshaven, unkempt, and you can see some uh, graying hair on the sides. Both the expressions for the face match up pretty well. He looks tired with the circles under his eyes. Pretty solid character, though in general he's not really that that flashy looking. Now when we get to the Sand Trooper, this is a totally new print for the Sand Trooper. The detailing for the sort of underlying print, the Stormtrooper body print is pretty much the same as stuff we've seen before, but the sand, uh, sandy detailing is totally new. And also that little bit of um, shoulder ammo, kind of taken from a Death Trooper print, but it's slightly changed position or maybe changed size. So that is technically a little bit of a different design for that print on the shoulder. And he's got a relatively large build for the backpack. He comes with a white shoulder pauldron Pretty similar also to uh, the last time the Moise Eisley Cantina set came out. But once again, it's all just a little bit different. Now let's get into the build itself. Let's take a look at the cantina first. And it's made up of three small rooms or sort of chunks. They kind of clip together and they don't really match up at any sort of uh, right angles or 90 degrees. Like the walls never touch perfectly. And it feels a little bit sort of sloppy in that sense. But the build for the rooms is decent enough. Now let's check out this new feature. This is the who shot first feature that I guess people are excited 
excited about. It's easier to operate if you sort of separate it out from the other rooms. And uh, basically on either end, there's this little sort of Technic gear and you can spin them side to side and that activates just a little bit of a Technic piece, which allows the characters to kind of dodge out of the way of the blaster shot. So now you can put an end to the argument of who shot first on your own. Obviously, I'm gonna be choosing Han Solo shoots first because he did. But anyways, I digress. The uh, seat build itself actually looks pretty good. And also one of the newer features added to this room from the last time we got it is this glowing bit of light or sort of like a lamp that's in the center of the table. Those are made of some glowing studs. And though it doesn't come up as pure white, it's kind of nice to have that sort of added detail. The second room is actually the front entrance. It's got a little sliding door function. These little sticker detail things showing sort of like a little console that you can actually sort of see from the scene. All in all, I'd say it's a little closed off and it feels kind of weak. The outside also shows a little bit more sort of detailing of the front entrance, but I don't really have much else to say about it. The last detail looks nice. I kind of like the uh, sort of bar detailing that they have. This was something I found pretty recognizable from the scene where you can see a lot of copper or brass bars sort of feeding into uh, sort of the drink dispensers. That's a nice aspect. And all in all, this little sort of corner piece of sort of the rounded bar looks okay. Now this last aspect of the build ended up being my favorite and I didn't really know what it was when I first saw the outside picture of the box. This is called the Ubercon 9000 or according to uh, Wikipedia, people call it the Ubric for short. And I ended up re-watching the cantina scene specifically looking for this and it is right outside the front entrance. Just it was a detail I never noticed before. It's a land speeder that kind of looks like an escape pod. And honestly, it reminds me of something that you might see from a Space Odyssey 2001. Personally, I think the build for this is awesome. The sticker detailing, I think works pretty well. The uh, actual coloration of the ship is pretty good. And all in all, I think the build style for this is really clever. It shows Greedo getting out of this like in the box art, but I don't think this is actually his particular vehicle. It's cool. It does fit a minifig and it does have this uh, stud shooter arm on the back, which of course I, I'm not really a big fan of stud shooters and it looks kind of ugly. But as far as I'm concerned, you can just snap it off without it hindering the shape or look of the build at all. And you can just think of it as like a fun little extra if you want to add a play feature. Now let's show off the whole set together once again, and I'm going to give you sort of my final thoughts. And in order to really give this a solid review, I have to say it's fine on its own if this Mos Eisley Cantina set never really existed before in the past. But in 2014, 75052 came out and it was way better. Now the build style for these rooms is pretty similar. Some of it is repeated like the quarter piece for the bar, as well as the seats that Han Solo and Greedo shoot. Personally, I think the bar looks just as good, if not better from the 2014 set. The entrance place that's also repeated looks better from the 2014 set. And maybe the Han Solo Greedo uh, booth looks slightly better here, but I just think it kind of stinks that uh, the room sections here aren't built up the same way as they were back in 2014, because then it would be super easy to sort of uh, add an extra bit of modularity to an already pre-existing set. But here you're gonna have to do a bit more sort of working around these uh, clip pieces and removing a lot of parts and adding some of your own. So at the end of the day, I would say in terms of build quality, the only thing that's better than the original version of the Cantina set is the Han Solo and Greedo room. I do like the inclusion of the little speeder pod, but ultimately this is half of a set that we got four years ago, maybe even a little bit less than half of the set with only some updated minifig prints, one new character, and the build for the Cantina itself isn't actually an improvement, I would say, based on the last one. Still, the price point isn't terrible, and if you never got the Cantina set from 2014, I could still see people being interested in purchasing this one. All right, that's it for this episode, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.